all I know is I come down here and I'm just like, this is the most beautiful, quiet space. And it was worth all of it. George the Tech. Hey, everybody. It's George the Tech. And we're back for another customer profile. We've had really great customers working with us over the years. And once in a while, we get to do something much bigger and sometimes much longer. And here to tell you <laughs> about what a project, what can, what form a home studio project can take and the twists and turns in that journey is a, a wonderful client of mine from Boulder, Colorado, Jessica Taylor. How are you doing, Jessica? I'm great. Hi, George. This is really fun to be able to talk about this. I wish this had existed when I started because just hearing people talk about their project would have just like helped me wrap my head around it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, you know, this idea came up, came over the course of a, a year or two and I started realizing it's a good idea for us to share these stories from a marketing perspective. And it's a huge service for others who are getting ready to embark on the journey and for your embarkation. When did you start the idea of having a well, where did you start before having the studio that you were intending to build a few years ago? What did you do before that? I My first studio was upstairs. Um, so I'm in the basement right now. Mm -hmm. uh, Two-story house. So it, we were. I was upstairs in uh, a closet. So we turned a walk-in closet into mm -hmm. my studio. And it was, I remember you rode your bike to my house. I know. To help me. Yeah, that's right. That was so cool. <laughs> I know. So, um, yeah, those were the humble beginnings, and mm -hmm. it sounded great, and I did national commercials in there. Yep. Um, everybody loved the sound. I loved the space, but, but. The, pro the, but the, the big problem is that I have three sons, and they are not quiet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I, I was in that space during COVID. Yeah. So yeah. everybody was home for a year. I was really busy. And I felt felt like, you know, all I had covering the door were like two velvet curtains. So yeah. Yeah. everything they did from down from the main floor, you know, came yeah. came vibrating up into my space. And when I'd have a live session, I would have to go through just massive amounts of gyrations to get I was going to ask you, what, quiet. What, was your, what was your protocol to get three boys and a husband to <laughs> quiet the F down while mom's yeah. making money? You know, I, I call it, the, it's called quiet on demand and it either costs money to build the studio or you have to bribe your family. How did you it was, do it? It was screen time. I mean, well, during COVID, the year of the, the school year of COVID, we hired a tutor actually to come and we essentially had our own pod. So I would try schedule my sessions and she was in the basement. So we were two floor. That was two floor separation, which was pretty darn good. It was really the main floor because the house is built in the 70s. And so it's just not well insulated. And you hear yeah. everything from the main floor, either in the basement or in the floor above. So basically, I tried to schedule live sessions for when they were downstairs. And I would be texting with the tutor like, oh, this one's going long or, OK, I'm done. So I would always let everybody know as soon as I was done, because I know they were trying to be quiet. I mean, something yeah. as simple as flushing the toilet on the main floor, walking to get a glass of water. We had ceramic tile floors. It was just mm -hmm. and then and then there was the yelling that I would just open up and just be like, can <laughs> just, you be quiet? At the end of the day, <laughs> the end of the day, sometimes mom to. has to yell. You resort to that. <laughs> so, so, okay. So it was really a mid, this was a mid pandemic thing. You're like, it's time. I need to have, I need quiet on demand. Yeah. Now. I need to, I really just wanted to be able to go and work at any point and have nobody even know that I was working or, you know, n just have to do nothing. I just wanted that kind of ease because, you know, how many years till my kids are gone? So this, so this, so I, I recall that we started this meeting. The idea, the planning, was it back in 2020 when we had our first meeting? Is that oh possible? I don't. Might what be. is this year? Twenty. It might be. It might be. Yeah, I yeah, believe we probably. started talking in 2020. I mean, obviously, I could go look at my notes, but I could too. We started in 2020 ish, right? And yeah. the, the shape of this project took a few different forms, right? So do you remember what your first yes. idea was that you wanted to do? Was that the backyard? 
Or yes, did we start thank in the you. Basement? Oh man, did, yeah, no. no. It was the backyard. We, right? The first plan was this. Um, there was an ADU, which is an accessory dwelling unit, that you can put in the in the backyard. Um, and we have a huge shed in our backyard, so it's like we could just get rid of the shed. And there's a company here in Colorado that builds these. I forget the name of it now, but they basically purpose built. They have purpose-built structures for just this kind of thing. If you wait want to add a Wait a minute. I'm going to stop you for a second. What? How did you just say the name of your state? Colorado. Okay. That's what I thought. You didn't say Why? Colorado. No, I don't say Colorado. Okay. Why? No. Back, back to the story. Just curious. <laughs> Actually, I did a local com- TV commercial, and uh, it came to – it was, it was uh, the, the, you know, the mountains of Colorado. And I was like, how do you want me to say that? Because my mom says Colorado. And and they said, we want you to say it how you say it. It okay. wasn't like there was a right or a wrong. It was just we want it to sound good. So however okay. you're used to saying it is how it should be said. Okay. But okay. I don't hear okay. anyone saying Colorado, except my mom. Do I you do. say Colorado? I don't, but I learned to say Colorado from my Coloradan friends who oh. said it's Colorado. Anyway, anyway, okay. I love yeah. stupid stuff like that. <laughs> I do too. So, how you say um, words? Yeah. So um, you you were going to get an ADU. The idea was to put a building in the backyard. We were yep. going to soundproof that. Yeah, we the were going to pour a concrete foundation. It was going to be uh, basically in the end. It got. It was going to be uh, close to a hundred thousand dollars. It was seventy five eighty. Which would be pretty reasonable, actually. That's I, I yeah, know. I remember still, you saying in California, amount. that's a deal. Yeah, um, yeah. But then I wasn't so sure, like with kids running around in the backyard, and then like in when it was snowing and cold. When would I really? Hit. Would I really want to walk through the snow to go work? Right. And I just didn't think I would. It would be cold and dark, and sometimes I work at night after the kids are in bed, and yeah, like totally it would California just be a California thing. That'd be an LA be thing, no problem. But uh, yeah. But Colorado, man, yeah, brutal. Yeah, so expense and just convenience. I was like, I, it needs to be in the house. Yeah, so then, so it was like, okay, well, let's remodel the basement. We started talking about it, and then it was, oh, maybe we're moving, right? <laughs> you have a really good memory. Maybe you just maybe right. you selectively oh, tune right. this out of your. You're, you know, I think back, I did which would because be a very it's healthy over. Thing. Yeah, that'd be a very healthy yes, thing to I do am, to let that I'm go. Very but I do recall there was healthy. a stint of possibly relocating, right? Yes. Uh, okay. So in the context of this whole thing, it, we were also going to remodel our house. Yes. So the question was, how much is it going to cost to remodel our house? Would it be better to just go buy a house that's already remodeled? And if we did, it would be bigger. And it would be a newer house. So all of these houses that we went to look at, I could have just stuck a studio bricks in the basement and I really would have been good. Yeah. Because they were bigger and they were just like more solidly built homes. Yeah. So Mm -hmm. that was, it was like, are we going to move or are we going to remodel this house? Mm -hmm. And in the end, where we live is fairly expensive. So, I mean, not by California standards. It's not Um, uh, Boulder's, uh, (laughs) Boulder County is pretty pricey. Uh, Yeah, yeah. it's pretty Mm -hmm. pricey. So we were like, you know what, we have a head, like we've owned this house for a while. So it would have cost so much more to go buy a new house. So we remodeled. So you stuck it out. So the project, once you broke ground, if you want to say that, swung the first sledge, um, you at the same time were planning a full remodel of the home, correct? So yes. you had to do this in phases? Yes. And my initial thought was that the studio would be done by the time they were remodeling so that I could come. And because it would be not fully soundproof, but pretty darn good, like once they were done with demolition and framing, that I'd be able to just come down to my basement and close my double doors and be able to work. Um and that could have happened, except that my contractor took almost a year to finish the studio. <laughs> but it, that dream was realized for part of it. They were still doing plenty of work. We had moved back in, and we didn't even have countertops. So I was completely able to come and work once so the studio you said was done. You moved back in, meaning for how long were you out of your home? Oh, we moved out of our house for five months. And so what did you do during those five months? How did you keep up with work? Sorry, this is like this okay. is like making you relive this. This is where I am this. not mentally healthy. This is the That's PTSD okay. part. I so get it. I would come, I would come here. I would contact the contractor. So basically, our entire main floor was gutted. It was unlivable. We were not remodeling the top floor yet. 
So everything was moved upstairs and into the basement. I would come, I would book a live session, and I would text my contractor, be like, how loud is it going to be this week? <laughs> what's the what's Asking the sound? a guy that fires nails out of a gun for a living <laughs> what loud is is probably not they, the best measure of, of but yeah. Anyway, yeah. So he'd be like, well, we have framing planned. And he would just be really honest. He'd be like, this is not a good week. This week will not be good. So at that point, when I had live session, I would book Coop Studios in Boulder. Oh, yeah. So I could only, I was there quite a lot. They really Um, must miss you now. They must. (laughs) Yes. Um, So I would just go book time at Coop. And obviously, I could only do that for projects that, because it was my expense, my studio expense. So it would have to be warranted. But I had, I, you know, that was, I was getting great projects. So it was always like, or I would like bunch them up. I'd be like, you know, so I could go and record multiple things at a time. Sure. And then what I would do is I would, if if the project wasn't like that, if it was like roster work that's lower price point kind of thing, I would come and I would sit in my studio at, upstairs and I would do like marketing stuff until I was like, oh, they're quiet. Okay, now I'm going to record some things. <laughs> you would just time shift whatever you, you would just I was work just, whenever there was yeah, opportunity. Pretty much. So I would always ask, when are you going to be at lunch? So sometimes I could squeeze a live session in depending on their lunch. Um, But it was just, it was constant juggling. It really was. And sometimes I would come to the house at night after my kids were taken care of because we were only living five blocks from the house. So I would come at night, but the house was so cold. It was so dark because it wasn't well insulated. It was the middle of the winter. And um, I remember I was- you go in your booth and you would be- Freaking It'd be freezing. cold. Maybe have a yeah. space, hold space I, heater. Right. Trying to make That's it. exactly it. And then I remember I worked on this one audition for a, a narration for a TV show, and it was about a woman who was murdered in Minnesota. And I'm from Minnesota. Like, I remember the story when it happened. <laughs> and I was so freaking scared, like, leaving the house that night. It was so dark and cold, and I had just done this, like, eerie murder, you know, like, oh, oh my gosh. God, I can't wait for this to be over. So in the end, it was a huge trial and a process. It took a year from start to finish, roughly, for the actual construction. Um, yeah. And in the end, did you get what you were hoping out of this whole thing? Please say yes. Please say yes. <laughs> yes. Please say oh, my yes. God. Oh, my God. Yes. Okay. This good. is like any time that I, the, I have three boys and they were all, every pregnancy is unique. But this was like a pregnancy. And as soon as that baby is born, you forget everything. That's why, you know, you're like reminding me. I don't remember any of it. All I know is I come down here and I'm just like, this is the most beautiful, quiet space. And mm. it, it was worth all of it. I wish it had been easier, but mm, yeah. it was still worth all of it. We say in construction or anything building, you get cheap, fast or good. You can pick two of those options. <laughs> now, sometimes you don't mm-hmm. get any. Sometimes you get one. But all three don't exist. You can't get all three, no. right? So it's no. very, uh, it's very, um, it's very, very challenging. Um, yeah. So what, now that you're in your soundproofed room, mm-hmm. what do you still hear? There's always something that will slip in. What do you hear? I mean, if the kids are running on the main floor and they're they're older now they're 15 13 and 11 so yeah. i think three four years ago they were yeah. like Way wild worse. animals yeah so that is improving but it's not 100 percent. in two years you'll be saying why isn't anybody running anywhere <laughs> you guys right. do nothing get off your computer exactly <laughs> that's what i'll be saying yeah. um that that's really the only thing i hear like last week um my husband works from home too and his office is right above mine and we actually put an acoustic floor in his office above so he's like i don't want to worry about walking around over your studio so we were remodeling anyway i don't hear him do anything i don't hear anything awesome yeah awesome um oh but yeah yeah, last week he he left for the day and the cleaning people came and Mm -hmm. i came down here to work and she had to come and knock on my door to get paid because yeah i couldn't hear them i couldn't hear that they were done so you never and they were heard mopping of, you never heard and of vacuuming. vacuum cleaner. No, I didn't hear anything. You didn't hear any of that stuff. No. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, it's amazing. So, the furnace, you know, sometimes I hear the furnace. Well, part of it's because the room right on this side is going to be a laundry room. Mm-hmm. Um, that's one of the next house projects. And the 
the ductwork that comes, um, it's not insulated and it's not finished right there. Mm -hmm. So I'll actually be talking with you again as might, we get ready to finish the laundry room. Might be something right that we can improve, yeah, on the other side yeah. of the wall, yeah, for sure. But I just did the uh, the thing that filters the noise out, the uh, the C box. The -box? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and now I don't even have to think about it. So yeah, so. those plugins um, are what make a lot of things that would be hard to do tenable now. Um, I'm f constantly, f I, I, I don't want to be in this, it's, it's ridiculous I have a booth. I should be in there, but I'm not. And so I literally have my hand on a fader and I am fading the mic up and down as, a, as small aircraft go flying over my freaking apartment. <laughs> like it's <laughs> maddening and I have processing galore. <sighs> Um, but just when you have low, just little bits of sound, rumble, little things that the CVOX just, it just, it's so transparent. Yeah. It's an, it's, a, it's, by the way, if you're wondering, it's a plugin that runs in the Apollo. So it, it's running within the actual Apollo system. The only other thing you can hear, you know, I have my own, this was a whole challenging piece was yeah. um, my HVAC. Mm -hmm. um, so I have my own, it's like an HVAC just for my studio. Yep. So I've got an an air intake and an air outtake. Yes. So air in, Supply air out. Yes. And I have an HRV that's in the crawl space yeah. that recycles and warms the air. So when it's on, I can hear it. Mm -hmm. But the CVOX takes care of that too. So yeah, now I so don't even have – I used to turn it off when I was going to yes. record. But now I don't even – and it's, it's really subtle. The thing about soundproofing a studio is – what you're doing now is you're filtering out 99% of all the noises that you would normally hear in your room in your home, right? So you filtered. So what do you hear? The remaining 1%. Yeah. And that remaining 1% could drive you insane. It could. So don't let it do that to you. And there are plugins like CVOX that will that will clean that little bit yeah. of stuff up. Because it, it's in a residence where we have, we have constricted spaces to work with. She obviously had, we're in a basement level. So the ceiling had to be dropped down to make room for this and that. It's it's a whole thing, right? To make it all fit into yeah. that area. And so getting all those sounds out is not going to be 100%. But mm -hmm. it, the fact that you've been able to work now and and, and it's and it's it's a sanctuary for you that is is hugely <laughs> gratifying to hear that. That's good. Oh my gosh, it is a sanctuary. And you want to know when I uh, am submitting to rosters or agents and just sending a picture of this space it's just credibility, you know? Yeah. I mean, certainly sound-wise, my studio two floors up, I mean, you just say it to yeah, everybody. It, it doesn't matter what it looks like. It just really matters what it sounds like. You don't have to spend a ton, but if you want to. If you did. There's, if you did. <laughs> if like, you did. I send the picture of my studio, and I describe what happened to create it, and mm. it just, you know, it, it's it's saying – that I'm a professional and I, you know, value yeah. the work I'm doing. It's, it's and I'm part of your brand. We say it's yeah. part of your brand. Your brand is your oh. image. And if you're not on camera, your brand is your your face and your body and all that stuff. Yeah. And you're for voiceover. It's, it's, it's all the other stuff in that room and, and your voice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm actually, I'm going to have some pictures done in here soon to add to my website. So yeah. you're mentioning your roster. So give us a little bit of just a short little bit about, about you. What did What's the voiceover work that's like your bread and butter? And what are the occasional like, whoa, I got that gig <laughs> sessions that you can think of? Well, I think it's easier to say what I don't do. I don't yeah. do video games. I don't do animation. I don't like to blow my voice out. And I don't yeah. love it enough to deal with the competition. Like it's not yeah. – ex yeah, some people, if you have to do that, then you have to do that. I yeah. don't have to do that. Yeah. So. I really enjoy big commercial campaigns. I do a lot of corporate. I've been doing a lot of IT. Mm -hmm. um, my husband is in IT sales. So, oh. like, I can speak that language in a really kind yeah. of, like, familiar, relatable way. It doesn't yeah. sound like I'm – I do script. loads. <laughs> it doesn't sound like I'm reading a script. Right, I right. do um, a lot of medical. I love medical work. Wow. Um, and a lot of phones, George. If you want to hear <laughs> – if you call our phone number, 424-226-8528, you're going to hear Jessica's voice, and you can hear what she sounds like in a phone system. And it sounds, what I, what can I say? It sounds like the real thing, because <laughs> she is. That's the yeah. real voice right there. So yeah. I love doing phones. I love phones. I don't know why. 
Maybe anyway, because it's like the most yeah. like fundamental voice thing that we've all been we've heard. Now Maybe it is all of our lives. You call a phone and you get you know yeah. you get a voice. It's something yeah. diff, something special about it. Yeah, and then I I'm just moving into political, mm-hmm. for better or worse. Hang on, strap. <laughs> Hang it. on. Yep. So yeah. political is I'm enjoying a lot because it's um, it's a little more mentally stimulating. Mm. You know, commercial is is great. It's you know, it pays really well. It's good work. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it just feels a little superficial, Mm -hmm. you know, where these political campaigns, you really have to think about, oh, what's the strategy behind this? Mm. It's kind of like the medical work. It just takes like some higher level thinking, which my my brain really requires or I get kind of bored. Now, is the political work mostly directed or non-directed? So far for me, it's been all directed. Mm hmm. I would, but I'm I would sure, think, but. yeah, I haven't been marketing it a lot yet. I, I just literally just got the demo like yeah. six weeks ago. Yeah. But I, I've already booked off of the demo. I, okay. That, so that's great. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting. Interesting work. Do you want to plug uh, anybody or anything? You want to plug who, who did your demo? Oh, J. Michael did my demo. J. Michael did the political. Mm-hmm. Yep. I took a class with him. Um, and then I'm also doing some coaching with Brandon Perry. Okay. Um, and he is a also... They're both great coaches, but they have vastly different styles and experience because J. Michael does the work. Right. So he certainly knows it. Brandon Perry, though, he produces it. Oh, so yeah. I'm just getting a t- completely different perspective That's from really him. That's really smart. When you're getting so, coaches, make sure they can yeah. complement each other and fill different yeah. slots. And do, they yeah. really do. Both totally different, but um, mm-hmm. really valuable. I really appreciate your time. It's fun to get to talk to you folks after these projects are over. And all the pain of the childbirth has subsided. <laughs> it has. I see. I didn't even remember that. I don't remember any of it. The fact that you were going to yeah. work in a, in a little room in your backyard. Yeah. And you're going to move. <laughs> yeah. Trudge through. I was going to go, yeah, put my snowshoes on to get to the studio. Well, we, we keep this like one spreadsheet. That's where all the different projects are, you know. And so we look, look in there every single week, every twice a week, actually. And what's going on? What's going on? We try to stay in touch with every single project until they basically tell us, stop bugging us. We'll get back to you when we need something. But we yeah. will keep up on top of everybody. Just make sure no matter how long that project takes that we're going to see it through. And I mean, we've had others that started in 2020 that aren't done yet. So I hope that makes you feel oh, better. Oh, that does make me feel better. Wow. <laughs> Good. Everybody has Dang. their reasons, but a lot yeah. of times it's money. And people I'll say deep if, and then they're like, oh, oh shoot, weird. It's expensive. It was not, it, it was, it was an expensive process, but has been so yeah. worth it. I will say uh, one thing that is important is make sure you have a contractor who um, is detail oriented. Um, Mm -hmm. I could really, I think I got my, my guy had never built a studio before, but he, he really, the communication was good between the three of us and the way you talk to him and he wanted it to be good. And, you know, I just don't think you would want someone who's just like, oh, this will be a fun, quick project. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like that could really, uh, sacrifice your ultimate I'm so glad you said that. It's so important to find a contractor that it communicates well. Yeah. Um, I would much rather have somebody like that than somebody is like I've done plenty of theaters and other things. Right. I know what we're we know what we're doing. Those are the ones that are by far the most likely to just improvise and just do. Be like we don't have to go. To, we don't have to do go that. off script. Yeah. And then, <laughs> so yeah, no, yeah. I'm really glad that is a great tip, pro tip when you're looking yes. for a contractor. Look for one that gels, communicates. Pays mm-hmm. attention to detail, spells things correctly, punctuates, does little things like little things, mm-hmm. you know, like they took, he took all the brown M&Ms out of the bowl because the writer said, don't, have <laughs> oh, that's an old Metallica story. Did yeah. you know that was a thing they did? No. They had a writer that said no brown or some red, maybe red M&Ms. Like it sounds so rock star BS, right? Yeah. Like, who would does. ever do that? And <laughs> Lars, Lars Ulrich, the drummer was like, no, man. We knew that if there were brown M&Ms in the bowl, then we had to be on point that night because we had pyro. <laughs> they had pyro all over the stage, right? Like fire and stuff. And they're like, if uh, if they didn't pay attention to the rider, what else did they screw up that night? So they would Ooh. be on extra high alert so they didn't get burned Oh, interesting. <laughs> yeah. 
How about that for a psychological trick, right? Yeah, but, um, no kidding. Yeah, look for people that pay attention to the details. That's really important when it comes. Yeah, it's not a big project. It's just a detailed project, and it's very detailed. We'll it's make not sure just... they get all the details, yeah. so they don't have to guess. Mm-hmm. You know? And in a way, I think you're right that may, it sometimes might be better somebody who has never built a studio. Because Mm -hmm. I could see how they would think they know better than the plan they're seeing on paper. Yeah, not to be Um, anyway ageist, but maybe somebody on the younger side, perhaps, sometimes. Yeah, Yeah, he he wasn't young. He was like our age. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, But he didn't have a big ego, is what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's so that not easy, good. but you, those people do exist. And, uh, you know, if you find one, keep keep them around. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So uh, thank you again. I really appreciate you adding that in. It's been a pleasure to work with you. Thank you for coming back for me when you need stuff. Um, yeah, and you're keep, the best. Uh, keep at it, and I'll let you know next time I'm, I'm visiting Boulder again. Yeah, because I got I got to finish this laundry room next door, so I'm going to need All right, we'll chat some more guidance. You, before you do more damage or i mean All right. have some <laughs> thanks thank george you. yeah thanks a lot